Hello, OCS families. I'm here in front of the school because I wanted to have a conversation with you about some of our safety procedures for when students return to campus. So you'll see behind me that we have a pretty empty street. What is going to happen uh, once students start to return to campus is that parents will only be parking in front of the school and walking in through this entrance if they have a need to come onto campus to either drop students off after the start time of school, pick students up early, or sign things. You'll see on the ground that we have some numbers. And the numbers are, sorry about this, <laughs> amateur photo videography here. You'll see some numbers and those are placed there so that as parents come up to the front of the school, they will be hitting the buzzer and they'll be talking to our office staff about coming onto campus and then they'll go and stand on one of those numbers and so they'll be hitting this button here and then they'll be allowed to come into campus to go to the um, office uh, when the office is ready for them to either sign something or to log on to the computer to say check a student out early once we're inside the gate you will see there are arrows on the ground that direct our families directly to the office and back and to be able to be spaced out six feet apart. And as we continue to walk in throughout the campus, we will see some arrows on the ground that are directional. So let me get to a spot here real quick to show you. So here you will see this side is going that direction where this side, the arrows are coming back up to the school. This will allow us to keep our walkways single directional so that our students and our staff are be able to stay at six feet apart and not have crowded walkways. We also will have our lockers will not be in use, um, at least for this school year, since the students will be bringing everything that they need onto campus and also taking it directly home the same day. Behind me is one of the drop-off areas on outside of campus. Since parents unfortunately are not going to be allowed onto campus as visitors or volunteers, and they unfortunately will not be able to walk their students to class. The reason for this is an LA County Public Health ruling and there are no parents that are allowed onto campuses. And so we have determined the safest thing to do would be having two different drop-off spots so that we have staggered starts. And this is the side off of Jamila where our fifth through eighth graders will come through. Sorry, it's a little breezy and it is the end of the day where the sun is right in my face. And behind me here in this space, between the play structure and the other school, we will have an area where the students will be lined up as they check in and come onto campus. When they are out on the street before entering campus, we will be taking to students' temperatures. We will be checking to see if daily health screening forms have been completed before entering campus, and the students will get hand sanitizer before entering campus. I'm now over in the garden area, and this part of the campus on the um, blacktop in between the two sides of the garden is where our kinder to fourth grade classes will line up. They will have a separate entrance that they will be able to come into after being dropped off and they will go out the same designated entrance. Now let me point out when I did say staggered starts, I was referring to when we get to the point of having a hybrid program on campus. When we do cohorts, which we have spoken of before, all of those students would start at 9 and end at 1.30. But when we get to the place where we would have more students on campus than just cohorts, it is just too unsafe to be able to have everybody enter at the same time, which is why we would have the staggered starts. Behind me is the typical valet gate that we know of for drop-offs in the morning. And that would be what is utilized for our kinder to fourth grade as they come in and out. And just through here, which is our staff parking lot, that is where our fifth through eighth graders would be exiting at the end of the day. So we've devised a system where at the end of the day, the parents can just do one valet 
and pick everybody up at the same time it's a little bit easier we'll have more hands on deck at that point to be able to process that it allows everyone to stay safe maintain distancing the students will be lined up and ready to be called out uh, once the families arrive in the valet pickup line and um, they'll have everything that they came to school with and be ready to head home. You'll notice behind me, this is the main arcade of the school and you can see that there are arrows that go both ways. This is one of the few walkway spaces that is dual directional. The reason being is that we do not have another walkway space to use, but it is also spacious enough and airy on both sides. People may be just passing each other, not stopping and talking, and able to get as far apart from each other as possible, getting close to our, um, to our, our poles that, that hold the space up. In front of me, I am looking at the sixth through eighth grade building, and behind me is third grade. And here is one of the places where we see one of the pathways coming into that main dual directional walkway. And you can see we have a stop sign. We have directional stop signs put on the ground so that people know who has the right of way, when it is your turn to wait for another um, parties, if it's a whole class of kids or if it's anyone walking on their own, uh, to, to wait for them so that you are able to maintain your distance. We know that for some students and some staff, staying six feet apart from each other when you're walking is something they've been practicing for a long time and is really easy for them. We also know that there are a lot of students who maybe haven't had a lot of practice in this. And it's gonna be challenging and hard for them. And by having more directional information on the ground and adults that feel comfortable with it, it will hopefully help ease that situation. We've already had three separate small groupings of our support staff on campus, walking them through the safety protocol process. And we feel that as we move towards in the next week, having more and more adults on campus learning what is it like to be on campus even when kids aren't here. That is gonna be really important and key for us. I'm up here now at the lunch area and you can see the NPR behind me. You'll notice that our water fountains are off limits. They are uh, wrapped up so that students can't use them. It is unfortunately at this time, being in the purple tier, something that we're not allowed to have access to. So students coming onto campus will be bringing their own water bottles and their own water to be able to drink. As far as the lunch tables go, this is where students will be able to eat lunch. As of right now, OCS wants to decide on the place of extra precaution. Our blue lunch tables are eight feet long, so students can sit on one end and on the other end and still be six feet apart from each other. They will also be facing the same direction to minimize any, you know, um, masks will be off and they'll be talking and things of that nature. And so at this time, we have enough space to fit our two cohorts on the lunch tables. And as we move forward and we start to see that maybe some of the, um, the protocols might be relaxing as we move from purple to red to Monday, maybe orange and yellow tiers that we'll be able to see how that will change as well. But for now, we're gonna side on the extra cautious part, especially since we will have so few students here during cohorts. And then as we build and move to the hybrid program, we would still use the same protocols. This may mean that the school schedule will look totally different because we would have multiple lunch sessions during the day. Remember, if your child comes onto campus, they have to stay in their cohort throughout the entire day. So they would be in class with them, they would be eating lunch with them and they would be playing in playtime with the same group of kids. We cannot have cohorts mix, not even through playtime. And so this really brings that structured play. Students get a chance to socialize with whomever is in their cohorts. We understand this is different and this is challenging for a lot of kids, but for many too, not being at home and having a different environment could be something that is positive but we want you to know what that structure would look like. I know a few parents have asked me, I hope they'll be able to get to play with everybody else when they come onto campus. And unfortunately, that's not the case. They will have to stay within their cohorts for all of their activities. 
Lastly, I'm in the school office. This is a place because we have the lineup out front that we know that we did not need to do a lot of modifications, but you will see on the floor that we have our markings for where to stand so that when we do have no more than two parents at a time that come into the office with requests, we'll be able to handle their situation and deal with everything, keeping that social distance between our office staff and our families. We hope that this initial little guided tour helped bring you some deep, really important information that I know a lot of you want to know about what could it look like, regardless of if we're in cohorts or whatever our hybrid plan may be, our safety protocols are our safety protocols, and they are gonna stay the same. Uh, I will share more about what we do if we, if kids are sick or if we have a case and how we notify you. All of that has been already spelled out and shared with our families and I will attach those documents so that you can look over those as well. Um, thank you very much and we know it's gonna be different. We thank everyone for going along with the accommodations, knowing that this is what is best for, to keep our community safe. Thank you.